Hi everyone, welcome to a video from me, Mike Hartley, um, building accessibility in Power Apps, uh, specifically Web Content Accessibility Guidelines Standard Compliant Theming. So, um, who am I? I uh, my name's Mike Hartley, I'm also known as Heart of the Midlands, and for the last couple of years I've been really focused on accessibility um, having been kind of introduced to the topic when I was asked to look after the accessibility track at Scottish Summit so you can connect with me on the usual social media channels up at Heart365 on Twitter, Mike B. Hartley on LinkedIn, website is heart365.co.uk and there's various other links as well. So, what is WCAG? Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. It's something that sprung out of the uh, W3C, um, the World Wide Web Consortium, and it's their standards for designing accessibility in web pages and web apps. A lot of it's been adopted by app makers as well um, because it sets some really good standards for including accessibility in your apps. And I guess the question is, if I were to turn around to you and say, would you like to include an extra 15, 20% of users in your app? You'd say, yes, please, I will willingly have a further 15, 20% of users. Or if I would say to you, would you like to deliberately exclude 15 to 20% of users? You would immediately say no or at least I hope you would. And that's kind of where accessibility is, because if we don't include accessibility in our thinking, we are excluding. And deliberately is a bit of a harsh one, but omission is kind of almost as bad as deliberate, really. Um, and I know that does sound harsh, but we've kind of got to be. Um, but if I phrase it as, would you like to include an extra 15, 20% of users, you would jump at the chance. And that is what accessibility is about. It's enabling a whole other group of people. And WCAG, in their standards, they have a set of standards around colour and colour contrast that caters for people with um, colour vision deficiencies um, so your typical one is your color blindness red green or people unable to see um, contrast and they define a set of guidelines around this um, and I found a website that is the web accessibility in mind website and they have a brilliant contrast checker on their website where you can enter two colour values and it will test those colour values against the WCAG guidelines. Bonuses by appending a simple API on the end of your query, your URL, it's an, it, it's an API that allows you to return it back into an app. Perfect. So, um, what I've done is I've decided to build a power platform solution that allows you to design colour themes um, that actually are then tested for WCAG compliance. And I've built it using Power Apps. There's a Canvas app primarily. There's a model-driven app, but that's pretty Mickey Mouse, to be honest. Um, there is a 
Power Automate flow that goes away, queries the web aim API, pulls down the results, and the theme data gets stored in Dataverse. Now, I'm a Dataverse man. It comes from a Dynamics background. Um, it's just kind of who I am. You could easily um, put it in SharePoint. You could even actually put it in Excel. If you really wanted to, you could put the theme in there. But because I am a Dataverse man, I put it in Dataverse. And all three of these elements talk to each other. The Power Automate talks to Dataverse, the Power App talks to Dataverse, and the Power App talks to Power Automate. So it's nice and simple. So let's take a look at what I've built in Dataverse. And here's kind of the metadata for the table that I've built. Don't let the number of rows put you off because when you actually look at it they're grouped together you've got um, light colors you've got main colors you've got selected colors um, it's very much designed with kind of a logic in mind um, in the You've got background colour and foreground colour. So the background colour being your background foreground, typically being your text colour. Um, and then against that, there is a WCAG AA and a WCAG AAA rating and a ratio. So the way the WCAG standard works is... To pass, you have to have, to pass on double A, the contrast ratio, which is based on luminosity, um, yeah, um, for a double A pass, it has to be 4.5 to 1 contrast ratio. Triple A is a stricter standard, and it's kind of the direction that we're heading. Double A is almost a stepping stone to the ideal, which is where we're aiming with AAA from what I can work out. And AAA is seven to one ratio. There are exceptions in this for larger text, for incidental text that really carries no meaning and doesn't particularly add anything. And also logo type, which is text that's part of a logo image. I ignore all of those. I just focus on the double A and the triple A because if you can achieve those, then your content, the contrast, the colors are going to work for the majority of people. And that to me is kind of the important factor here. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I think even in larger text, even in incidental text, why shouldn't incidental text also fit in with those ratios? Um, and logos, I mean, if you want your logo to be seen by people, well, you want to make sure the contrast ratio is there. So I've paired it. So you've got background colour, foreground colour for various different groupings of colours. And against those, you've got the ratings and the ratio number. So you can see how close you are to meeting those. Um, there is also your standard um, name, so your colour scheme name. Um, the WCAG status for the overall colour theme, if one element fails AA or AAA, the scheme will be classified as a fail. And there is another one which is highlight colour, which is the border around things like buttons and um, input boxes when you've hovered over them or 
you've tabbed to them if you're using keyboard navigation. So let me introduce you to the Power App. So before I really get into this, and I've put it front and center on the um, screen, I need to give a huge, huge shout out um, to Isha Prakash. Um, he is the creator of the color pick control that I'm using in the app. And that was kind of the cherry on top of the cake for me was the color picker. And we got talking and it turns out that he's also been doing work around WCAG as well. So version two of this and further iterations are going to really improve things. But I wanted to launch this one because for me, using a flow was a challenge because I'm not great at using APIs, but this was so simple. And then Sancho Harker, his theming template um, app and him talking about it has really been the inspiration for me. And this that I've produced isn't... kind of a rival to what he's done it's in addition to what he's done um, and I'm hoping to connect with Sancho a bit more and again future iterations see where we can find commonalities and and really build things together so with that let's get on with the important thing the show Here I have my Power App Canvas app. It's a very simple welcome screen, and I've got a welcome screen, I've got a simple theming screen, and a full theme screen. This project started out with a very simple idea in that you could, if you wanted to, just include two themes your standard theme and a high contrast theme and every app really should have high contrast included um, you could do it as simply as having a config page with a selection of boxes that you then use based on a toggle switch to define your colors and I wrote a very simple power app flow that went away and for just my quick test just tested one color the dark color and pulled the results back in so it goes away and there you go actually I think it does highlight color um, and it passes and there's the ratio the big one for me was the full theme and this is where it all comes to life so if i actually dive into the app itself and go into the full theme demo the app itself is accessible in that i can tab through items you can select your color scheme which is pulled from dataverse um, the app itself responds to the color theme so here's high contrast theme based on the windows high contrast colors um, not perfect there are things to improve but that's the thing with accessibility you're never going to get it 100 percent perfect but making some change is better than making none so let's go to the default scheme and give you a quick demo so here's your highlight color I can change this to being um, let's go for a nice shade of pink and select that using Isha's color pick control so thank you um, you will be able to download all this and you can click on the button and go to Isha's github page 
um, you can select your background color um, so let's change that to something really horrendously bad um, and once you've defined your colors you can then click the update and test and it goes away and it checks all of I'll tell you what, let's also change this one as well it goes away and it checks all of these pairs um, the highlight color isn't rated which is why it kind of sits on its own but you click update and test and it goes away and it calls the power automate flow which there's lots of variables and it just loops through um, and it says are there main colors present kind of because if you've built this up you might not have actually filled the values in it goes away sets the foreground the background color variable it calls the API which is very simple it's a URL with foreground and background color value it pulls the data back which just simply returns the ratio and the AA and AAA and then it sets the various values and it does this for all of them and then it updates Dataverse um, with those values and the overall theme status so if I refresh you can see that my main colors and my light colors have failed both AA and AAA um, now let me see can I make let's try and see if I can get it to fail just a triple A only and while I'm at it I will set this back to white because that red and the pink is horrendously bad so let's do a quick update and test Oh, no, I didn't select there, did I? Let's do that. And I don't think this one is quite there yet. So let's try that. The flow itself runs fairly quickly. Okay, I'm not quite getting to AAA. Let's try again. See, the, the actual line can be very, very fine. No, that's... And for some people, you might look at that text and think, well, that's perfectly fine. But for other people, that colour contrast is just not, not there. So, here you go. It's passed on double A but it's failed on AAA and the important thing for me is making sure that we're building apps that are accessible and meeting accessibility standards in the future as well um, so if I change that all the way up to black and do my update and test again and give it a quick whir you'll see it's passed and you can see the ratio numbers so you can get a feel as well for for how close you are um, to those limits and to the ratios it might provide a surprise to you to see that the button color the blue and the white it's only a ratio of eight to one which means it's not too far off a triple A fail um, it wouldn't necessarily take much to knock it over the triple A um, he says giving it a whirl and just seeing oh I've taken it too far now but I mean it's only a small only a small distance and it caused it to fail so it's 
very, very fine margins sometimes that we don't realise. The other key part with the... Ah, there you go. I've managed to get a, another AAA. The other key part is actually being able to visualise how your colour scheme is going to work. So you've got the app mock-up here where you can see the home button, you can see a button, a drop-down list, and I've really got to change that pink because that pink is horrendously bad. Um, you can see your drop-down list, you can try your text input, your toggles, your options. This is a a horizontal gallery where I've just set some colour scheme and the star ratings. Um, nice and simple, very, very quick. I'm going to do more videos that will go into this in a bit more depth and look at how I've built the Power Apps functionality with the variables and loading the color schemes but this was just a very very quick overview um, to give you an idea and to give you a feel before I quickly drop out let me just here's the model driven app as I say it is nothing special it groups the colors together has the colors with the color picker and then the pass and the WCAG um, but it's here where you can say to create a new color scheme. So I could say um, garish colors. Um, and I could say I want a garish green background. And I want black text. And my buttons I'm going to have as bright pink with white text and the highlight color is going to be uh, let's go for a purple shade the light color is going to be a light orange the light text can be oh let's go for a bluey color oh no I went too far there A bluey color and selected items. Let's make the selected color. Oh, let's make it aqua, kind of cyan -y color. And there you go. Um, so I've created that. And now, if I go into my main power app and let's do a refresh because it loads the color schemes. Uh, do, do, do. there you go garish colors oh dear lord that is horrible that is ugly um, and shows them as untested and let's just see oh did I not click on the button no I didn't oh dear that is horrible that is just grotesque um, Bizarrely, only one of them actually fails the colours. Um, the rest of the colours I've managed to pick. But you can also see, actually, by seeing on the app mock-up, that the light colours and the main colours don't provide you a contrast. So, although I'm testing contrast, there are areas where you've got to apply a degree of human vision to it as well. So, that's the app that is the app through and through on that note i'd just like to say a big thank you for spending time to watch this video and i hope you found it informative i hope you will go and download the video uh, i hope you'll go and download the solution i hope you'll take a look there is a blog accompanying blog post and there's going to be a whole series of things coming up as well you can find the blog post and more information at heart365.co.uk slash wcag um, please check out my social media links um, 
my newly minted GitHub as well, where you can download this as well. And thank you once again, everybody, uh, for spending time. Hopefully you'll find it useful and I will speak to you all very, very soon. Bye-bye now.